Hey everyone, I'm Hannah, welcome back to my channel and today we are talking about movie marathons. I absolutely adore movie marathons. Marathons? Marathons. I feel like I'm putting an extra effort to say it correctly and then by saying it correctly it just doesn't sound right. Movie marathon. Movie marathon. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> I love a good theme to a movie marathon or it could be that you're actually watching movies that are supposed to be watched together, like they're, they're a series, a saga, if you will. It feels like an epic endurance test. I always feel like I've accomplished something coming out the other end. And I just enjoy making an event of things rather than just like watching a movie. Oh no, 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 too boring, too chill. Not enough at stake here. <laughs> we, we need to take this to the next level. And that is where my love for movie marathons comes in. I've done many movie marathons. I've hosted some at my house. I've also just done casual ones with just me and Dan. And then also I have paid for tickets to go and do movie marathons at the Prince Charles Cinema in London. It's a good time. When the cinemas in the world reopens, I would highly recommend if you're in London, it's like an all nighter and you take your pajamas and there's loads of you in there and you're just in your PJs watching films and you come out of the cinema after eight hours at 9 a.m. in the morning, you're just like, what happened? It's amazing. Marathoning movies is one of my preferred ways of watching series. And in this video, I'm going to take you through a bunch of different franchises and talk you through how long it will take you to watch each one and some of my personal recommendations. <laughs> Does anyone care about this video except for me? I did a FaceTime with my parents recently and I basically talked them through this entire list, talking through like all of the times and how long it would take. And my dad was like so into it because my dad was like, oh my God, I want to do it. And my mum was like, this is the most boring thing ever. So some of you will be watching this being like, I'm so into it, this is my jam. And others will just be like, nope. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. Side note, <laughs> this hair, I want my hair to be wavy today. So I put them in French plaits and I'm not very good at doing that but this is what this is what we're working with there are so many different kinds of movie marathons that you can do for this video i have picked five franchises which i think are hugely popular so i think a lot of you will be interested in however they're pretty much all fantasy so if you're not into your fantasy genre then maybe this isn't the information that you want but let me know and i can do another movie marathons list that is not fantasy, that is lots of different films. But this is purely just giving you the information that you need to have a successful movie marathon. Here we go. Number one, The Lord of the Rings. Obviously, this is a movie marathon that I could do again and again and again. And for me personally, it is the only way to watch these films. By the end, you feel like Frodo. You've just gone on this incredible journey. You're traumatized, you are exhausted, you're on Mount Doom as it's exploding. Just like, it's over, it's done. But there's still like another half an hour of the film to go. Anyway, you should do extended editions, is my recommendation. So The Lord of the Rings is three films. You've got The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King, obviously. The total runtime for theatrical releases is nine hours and 18 minutes. And total runtime for extended editions is 11 hours and 22 minutes minutes. Basically, what that means is you can do this. It will only take you one day. When I've done the Lord of the Rings marathons, we've always done extended editions and we've started in the late morning. So if you start about 11 a.m., you'll finish at 11 p.m., like before that. And then you can go to bed at a normal time. But what it does mean is you have to carve out an entire day. Just being like, this is what we're doing today. Make sure you have lots of snacks, maybe order and take away. Use the credits to go to the toilet and refill your drinks and do things that you need to do. But for the time that the <laughs> movies are on the screen, you just get your butt down and you watch them. Okay. I also, because some people will ask, put The Hobbit in here, but this is not necessary. You do not have to watch The Hobbit with it. And if you do watch The Hobbit with it, I'll let you decide whether or not you want to go Hobbit first and then Lord of the Rings or 
switch it up. The Hobbit trilogy is An Unexpected Journey, The Desolation of Smaug, and The Battle of the Five Armies for a total running time of seven hours and 54 minutes. So it is doable if you do them together. The total running time for the extended editions and The Hobbit is 19 hours and 16 minutes. And you know how I know that is doable? Number two, Harry Potter. <laughs> Was that a great segue? I don't know. So there are eight Harry Potter films. Do I need to name them all? We all know them. We're going to go through them. The Philosopher's Stone, not Sorcerers. The Chamber of Secrets, The Prisoner of Azkaban, The Goblet of Fire, The Order of the Phoenix, The Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows Part 1, Deathly Hallows Part 2. Two. And this is a marathon that I have done. I did it for my birthday last year and a bunch of my friends came over, but then they all abandoned me at 1am after film five. And I was like, do I go to bed? No. I kept going. The total runtime for all eight Harry Potter films is 19 hours and 39 minutes. So that's how I know that you could do The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings because that's less time than all of the Harry Potter films. We started at 1 p.m. and I finished Deathly Hallows Part Two at 8 a.m. the next morning. I would not recommend doing it this way around because at 8 a.m. I got into bed to go to sleep and everything was out of whack for that entire weekend. So I think if you're going to be doing a 20 hour one and there are actually a few others in this list that do hit that 20 hour marker i reckon you like you wake up and you start you get up and you go because this means that you'll probably end up finishing in the early hours of the morning so it only feels like you maybe stayed up a bit too late playing video games until three four in the morning and then you can sleep until like 10 and you still got like a good amount of sleep so that would be my recommendation also doing the harry potter marathon was just so good. It felt so rewarding to go from like when they were babies and like watching the older films which I hadn't seen in ages and it just being so nostalgic to then just like the stakes building and building and building in like every single one and it was just so good. Number three, The Twilight Saga. Now I'm putting this one in here because I saw some friends recently tweeting about watching Twilight and to my shock I was jealous. I have not seen the Twilight films since they came out in cinemas. But now that I'm inside all of the time, I'm kind of like, ooh, tempted to watch these again. So The Twilight Saga is five films. You've got Twilight, you've got New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn Part 1, and Breaking Dawn Part 2. And this gives you a total running time of 10 hours and 8 minutes. That sounds easy now, doesn't it? Easy peasy. I just need to pick a day and do it. I'm so tempted to do this. Is it, are they gonna be bad? Are they gonna be bad? Probably, but good bad, right? Number four, this is a meaty one. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now that Disney Plus is out, we can all do this, except for the Hulk and Spider-Man films, but you need to find those elsewhere. So I'm going to be doing this in theatrical release order, not chronological order, because there's some debate. Also, Marvel released their films in phases. So it is a lot of movies. <laughs> I'm gonna break it down into the phases of how long each phase is going to take you. So, <clears throat> in phase one, we have Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and Marvel's The Avengers. And this takes you to a total runtime for phase one of 12 hours and 24 minutes. So this is very similar to extended Lord of the Rings, like an hour longer than that. So again, start in the morning, finish, go to bed. Easy. However, the MCU does not end there. Oh no. So phase two, Iron Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. And phase two is a total running time of 12 hours and 37 minutes. Oh boy, you see how this adds up. So again, morning, finish, bed. Although here's the thing for this one, what you might want to do if you are going to marathon the MCU in phases, you might want to end phase two on Age of Ultron, just because then you're ending on an Avengers movie and it's already exciting, rather than like 
heightened emotions like oh my god and then you go to Ant-Man so maybe you put Ant-Man at the beginning of phase two maybe Ant-Man is at the f beginning of phase two and my information sources are wrong because that just seems weird but then phase three starts with Captain America Civil War which feels like an Avengers movie why is it a Captain America movie it's an Avengers movie. Anyway, phase three, Captain America, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume Two, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame. <sighs> phase three gives you a total runtime of 22 hours and 46 minutes. So that's longer than the Harry Potter one. However, there is one more Marvel film that is currently out, but is technically at the beginning of phase four, and that is Spider-Man Far From Home. If you add Spider-Man Far From Home onto phase three, so that you are marathoning all of the available Marvel films, it is 24 hours and 55 minutes. Over an entire day. 26 hours over an entire day. Different thing entirely. If you were to break up phase three, where would you break it up? Maybe after Thor Ragnarok. I think like feel like Thor Ragnarok would be feels like a mm, like a good mm, and then it means you get to start the next bit with Black Panther, which is pretty cool. Or you just do it. And I have complete admiration for anyone who is able to do that. And do you know who else I have complete admiration for? Anyone who is able to do the entire available MCU marathon it completely in its entirety. Because that will take you 49 hours and 56 minutes. Over two entire days. <laughs> ah! So I don't know if I would recommend that. Easy start, marathon phase one, then marathon phase two, and then tackle phase three however you would like, however you see fit. And number five, Star Wars. So I actually first watched the original trilogy as a marathon. That was my introduction to it. So actually, I cannot tell you what happens in each film because I watch them all at once and it all just blends in. The reason why I did that was because I'd never seen a Star Wars film before The Force Awakens came out and it was like very soon that The Force Awakens was coming out and I was like, shit, 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 I need to watch the original trilogy and just by myself spent an entire day in bed watching episodes four, five, and six. I still haven't seen episodes one, two, and three. Lots of people will say, keep it that way, but I, I want to know. Also, you make your mind up about in what order you want to watch these trilogies, theatrical release or chronological order. The order that I have here is theatrical release order. So the original trilogy is A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, which gives you a total runtime of six hours and 16 minutes. Easy. The prequel trilogy, the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith, total runtime of six hours and 58 minutes. Piece of piss. So easy. Is piece of piss a phrase that Americans use? <laughs> what does that mean? How, how does it mean, how does piece of piss mean that's easy? Anyway, and then the latest sequel trilogy, you got The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. Is The Rise of Skywalker available to stream or buy online anywhere yet? I'm not sure, but hopefully soon. And so then you can complete this marathon. And the sequel trilogy has a total runtime of seven hours and 12 minutes, easy. However, if you want to do them all at the same time, that would be 20 hours and 26 minutes. But as we have learned, I could do the Harry Potter marathon, which was 19 and a bit hours. So just just an extra hour. I mean, I was a broken woman at the end of that. But if I had to, I would have been able to squeeze out an extra hour. I mean, anything is possible. So there you go. There's my list of five fantasy movie marathons and the time that it'll take you and some recommendations of like how to do them. Please let me know in the comments if you have done any of these, if you're planning on doing any of these, maybe we can do some together at the same time, wouldn't that be glorious? I hope this video gave you some ideas, some inspiration, and also just some confidence and motivation that you can do it. You can have the movie marathon of your dreams. <laughs> this was a very silly video and I hope that you enjoyed it. 
please like this video if you did and don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Da -da 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 -da, over an entire day.